All right, so honestly, I'm not sure if this video is gonna be useful to anyone, but in this video, I'm gonna be talking about all of the money that I spent in 2021, both personally, but also in terms of the business. I have done a video that you might've seen linked here and over there about how much money I made in 2021. The total figure on that is pretty ridiculous, but that only tells part of the story. Really, the expenditure is the other half of the story, which is why we're making this video in the interest of transparency and honesty. If you don't care about my personal and business expenses, don't watch the video. Honestly, it's not gonna give you any value at all, I promise. <laughs> so please watch something else or do something better with your life. But if you're interested for whatever reason, maybe you have your own business, maybe you're a creator and you're interested to see what these sorts of numbers look like, or if you're just more morbidly curious, maybe you'll find this video useful. Anyway, let's start off with the personal expenses. So we've got seven broad categories of stuff to talk about, and the first one is rent and mortgage. So currently I'm living in London. I moved here around mid-August, and since then I've been paying around about $3,650 per month in terms of rent. rent. I'm actually paying pounds, but I've tried translated all the money in GBP, Great British Pounds, into dollars, because dollars is a more internationally recognized currency that most people know what a dollar means, whereas very few people know what a GBP means in their own local currency. So sorry, anyone from the UK, if you're concerned why I'm talking about dollars. So in addition to paying rent in London, I'm still paying the mortgage on the flat that me and my brother jointly own in Cambridge. When it comes to the mortgage, I'm not counting the principal payment of the mortgage as an expense, because it's just going into the home equity. But when you have a mortgage and ours costs around about about 1,200 pounds per month, which is however many dollars, I don't know, 1,200 pounds per month. Of that 1,200 a month, about 200 pounds or $266 is ground rent and maintenance. So this is the amount of money you just have to pay every month to just be part of the flat. And that involves maintaining the elevators and the stairs and the stairwells and all that kind of stuff. That is money that goes out of my pocket. That is just money down the drain that I can never get back. And there's also around about $531 per month of interest on the mortgage. It's got like a 1.6% interest rate, something like that. But the interest on the mortgage is also an unrecoverable expense. And one of the things people often think about is renting is money down the drain. But also when you buy a house and you, you buy a flat or an apartment and you have the ground rent and maintenance, you have the property taxes if you're in the US, you have the interest on the mortgage, all of that is also money down the drain. And so the buy versus rent calculation is not quite as simple as renting is money down the drain, but we'll talk more about that in a video another time. And so in total, I'm paying $14,600 for these like four or five months to live in London, 9.5K in Cambridge, and that gives us a total of $24,160 for the year, which is $2,014 per month on average spent on rent plus maintaining this mortgage. All right, second big category degree expenses, let's talk about food. Now this one's a bit mental. So the first one is takeaway. I spend about $40 a day, $40 to $50 a day on takeaway, um, which comes out to $1,200 a month, which comes out to $14,400 per year. This is a bit mental. The reason for this is that I tend to get takeaway for lunch and for dinner. Or if I'm here at the studio, I tend to eat out for lunch and dinner. Or even when I was in Cambridge and I was working from the local WeWork, I would tend to eat out for lunch and dinner. I kind of want to get more into cooking. I've so, sort of been saying that for many years now, but I haven't really gotten into it. Partly the reason why I like takeaway so much is because it's just so incredibly convenient just being able to order takeaway on Deliveroo. And because I kind of feel like I'm doing a lot of stuff, cooking is just a very low priority thing in my life, cooking and cleaning up and all that stuff. Maybe 2022 New Year's resolutions will be that I will make take more active effort in cooking, but I do try my best to make those takeaways somewhat healthy so that I don't just completely balloon. On average, I also go to restaurants around twice a week and every time I spend around about $40. So that's $320 per month on restaurants, which is 3,840 for the year. But because I spend so much money on takeaway and restaurants, I actually don't spend a lot of money on groceries. Maybe like 50 pounds or $70 a month on groceries, which is only $840 per year, which is a significantly lower grocery bill than most people in the world, not in the world, in the UK. So there's that at least. And if you're interested in what sort of takeaways I get, it's mostly poke bowls from a place called Ahi Poke, which is very good and somewhat healthy, or like grilled chicken from Pepe's or Nando's or something like that. Right, so the third big category is the buying of stuff in general. So tech is probably the, business, the biggest expense here. I actually don't buy a lot of stuff personally that I can't call a business expense, but one of the things I recently bought was an Alienware gaming PC, which was $4,600. That was a personal expense. I bought it to do some World of Warcraft and do some streaming and stuff. And I ended up using it for a few months and then lending it to my friend because I never really used it ever again. So that was a big tech expense this year that was pretty unnecessary, if I'm being honest. I also bought myself a massage gun, one of those like Theragun knockoffs for $130 to help my massage my shoulders and stuff because I freaking love massages. And I bought a few Philips Hue smart light bulbs to kit out my flat in Cambridge and like one of them for London. And overall that added up to around about $400 spent on this sort of random bits and bobs of smart tech around the house. So overall this year I've spent about $5,130 on random tech of which the bulk of that was that pointless Alienware gaming PC. The next big category of expenses is books and audiobooks. Now on average, I buy about 15 books on Kindle every month. This averages about $9 each 
been through my Amazon order history, which, is, which means that I spend about $135 per month on books, which is $1,620 per year. I also have a subscription to Audible and I often buy a bunch of audiobooks. So for example, uh, I bought $167 worth of actual audiobooks this year uh, and a bunch more from the 30 plus or so Amazon uh, like Audible credits that I had this year as well. Now I spend large amounts of money on books and audiobooks because they're the single highest ROI return on investment thing that I could possibly spend my money on. And my model for this is that literally anytime anyone I respect gives me a book recommendation or any of my friends or anything like that, then I will just immediately buy that book and start reading it. Because like there are so many books that have just changed the way I think, changed my life in so many ways. And it's just amazing that for somewhere between five and $10, you can get years, if not decades of someone's research compiled into a book that you can read within a few hours or listen to within a few hours at 2x speed. Right, so the third big category of buying stuff is clothes. And on average, once every three months, I will do some kind of shopping trip. And on average, I'll spend somewhere between sort of $700 and $800 on one of those shopping trips. It's like, you know, these shirts, you know, I went through a phase of buying Ralph Lauren shirts, which are kind of expensive. I always seem to have to replace my underwear every few months. It just disappears. I don't know why. I don't know if you guys have that as well. The underwear just, just vanishes. I have no idea where it goes. The underwear that I use, if you're interested, is Uniqlo Airism. It's by far the best boxes I've ever worn and they're great. I also have to replace my socks every six months or so because socks also seem to vanish into the ether and I have no idea where they go. But overall, I spend about $2,800 this year on clothing. And then we have personal care. So. Um, I subscribe to a product called Heights, which is like the supplement thing for $53 a month. I also invest in Heights, but I'm a paying customer. It's a smart supplement. I take two tablets every morning. The other personal care subscription that I've got is this thing called Dermatica, which is a retinoid skincare thingy, which is about like $40 a month. And then if we add up the other skincare personal care things like toothbrush, toothpaste, shampoo, conditioner, moisturizer, sun cream, all that stuff. Overall, that comes to about $70, $80 per month. And so it's $840 a year on toiletries, $318 this year for heights because I've only been doing it for about six months. And that adds up to $1,158 spent on various personal care related things this year. Let's talk about homeware now. So I moved into a furnished apartment in London. So I actually didn't need to buy much in the way of furniture, which was quite convenient. But for my Cambridge flat earlier this year, I did buy the Dyson cordless Animal V10 Hoover, something like that. Uh, and that was about $700. I bought a Philips air fryer and I used it once in my life. That was about $200. And I bought a bunch of random, like except like a dish drainer and, and stuff off of Amazon for like $20 here and there. And so that's around $1,200 spent on like kitchen or home appliances. And then I spent another $800 on things like bed sheets and towels and linens and duvet covers and pillowcases, which are surprisingly expensive. I hadn't really needed to buy that stuff before because either it was provided by my university accommodation or by my mother, but this year I decided to buy white company stuff and that was kind of expensive. Who knew that this stuff actually costs money? So $800 uh, in total on that sort of bedroomy type stuff. So overall around $2,000 spent on homeware. And the final big category of buying stuff was that me and my brother uh, bought our mom a car, which was $16,000 each. So $32,000 in total. And we both had that just fun because we were making money and we thought, hey, let's buy a mom a car. <laughs> um, so that was another category. So in total, the buying of stuff um, is a total of $28,955 which is around about 2.4K dollars a month on average. All right, so the next big category of expenses is subscriptions and apps. Now, in terms of dating apps, I've spent $414 on dating apps this year. So I had a Hinge premium subscription for $234, a Bumble lifetime subscription, which I got last year, so that doesn't count as this year's expensive expenses. And I subscribed to Tinder Gold for $20 a month, and I used between January and September for $180 in total. I also used Muzmatch, which is a Muslim dating app, but I got a free premium subscription because I'm mates with a guy who runs the company. And and I interviewed him on the podcast. Link down below if you want to check it out. I'm not actually using dating apps anymore. I will be making a video on that at some point in the future, uh, but overall $234 on dating apps. Then we have Audible, which was $127.50 for the year. Honestly, if I could only ever have one subscription in my life, it would just be Audible because I think it's just incredibly valuable and they're not even sponsoring this video. I also signed up to Amazon Prime, which is $104 for the year. Kindle Unlimited, which is $10 a month, which is $127.20 per year. Spotify Premium, $13 a month, $156 per year. Waking Up by Sam Harris, the app that I've been using to try and get into meditation. That is $100 for the year. Netflix, I don't even have a Netflix subscription, so I leech off of my brother for when I want to watch Squid Game or Drive to Survive is what I'm watching at the moment. And in terms of my gym subscription, I spent about $150 a month on the gym. So I was a member of something called David Lloyd back when I was in Cambridge. And now in London, I'm a member at this thing called Virgin Active which you may have heard of, but yeah, $150 a month. So $1,800 for the year. Now this is the personal section. So I've not included subscriptions for the business. We subscribe to a zillion other things like Zoom and Notion, uh, but, uh, hundreds of other software apps, but I'm software 
products, but I'm not including those in the personal list. Next, we have travel, where this year in total, I've only spent $3,330. I say only, it's still quite a lot. On travel, I had a trip to Croatia, which was around $800, a trip to Amsterdam, which was around $2,000, and a trip to Pakistan, which was around $500, because I only paid for the flights and everything else was like family and stuff. Next, we have the big category of services and outsourcing. So the big one on this is that I outsource my laundry which is around $50 per week. So it's around $2,400 for the year. And honestly, the reason I do this is because one of the best ways that you can use money to buy happiness is by eliminating the things that you find unpalatable. I freaking hate doing the laundry and I'm more than happy to pay someone $50 a week to do the laundry for me and do the ironing and make sure the shirts are ironed and all that kind of stuff. And if that saves me two hours of time or even one hour of time, I think it's an absolute no brainer. So outsourcing laundry has been a big quality of life improvement in my life this last year or so. And yes, I know that's really privileged and first world problems and all that kind of stuff, but hey, if you have the money, then you should probably outsource things that you don't like doing if you can afford it. While I was in Cambridge, we also paid for a cleaner to come in every other week. And that was $34 every other week for about six months. So $408 in total. For most of this year, I've also had a personal trainer, which is around about $110 per week for somewhere between two and three sessions, which is $440 a month or $5,280 per year in terms of personal trainer. Again, I think this is a no brainer expense if you can afford it. Yes, I could go to the gym and stuff and go to classes and things if I really wanted to, if I was super motivated, but I found that since getting a personal trainer, it's A, made working out much more fun and it's also made me more likely to stick to it and more likely to actually push myself when I'm at the gym because I've got someone there telling me what to do. And, you know, I, people have been commenting for the last year or so that, oh, you look a bit bigger, the biceps are looking good and that, feel, that feels nice. So I think, yeah, in the future, I'm just always gonna have a personal trainer because it's a no brainer if you, again, if you can afford it and if you value your health and if you're a waste man like me who can't self-motivate themselves to actually do these exercises. And finally, I've spent about $1,500 on various lessons this year in terms of art lessons, which were around $1,000 in total for a few months and guitar lessons, which were about $500 in total. I've quit both of those guitar and art lessons because I ended up physically not having enough time in my calendar to fit those in, but maybe I will resume those at some point in life. And finally, just to blitz through the bills, um, energy, utilities, gas, electric, water is roughly about $130 per month. So, 15, so $1,560 for the year. Car insurance is $1,300 for the year. And the upkeep is zero because I have a Tesla that doesn't require any maintenance, which is awesome. And finally, there's this thing in the UK called council tax, which is around about $130 a month. So that's about $1,600 for the year. And crucially, I'm not including in income tax as an expense. I will, be, I will be taxed very heavily on my income, but that will come later for further down the line at the end of the financial year. In the UK, the financial year runs from April to April. Maybe it does elsewhere, elsewhere in the world, I don't know. Um, and so income tax is not calculated as part of this year's, like this calendar year's expenses, at least in my book. Now, on top of all these personal expenses, I've also made a bunch of investments in things like real estate, like the mortgage, real estate upkeep, stocks and shares, and crypto, a bunch of random altcoins, which I probably lost money on, and a bunch of angel investments in various startups, but I'm not including those in this video. I will talk about my actual investment portfolio another time instead. So overall, my total personal expenses for the year are eight $89,462 and the monthly average is $7,455, which is actually not bad. It is lower than I thought it would be. Let's now go over all of our business expenses for this year. So the data on this is actually much more on point because we have like accountants and bookkeepers and stuff when it comes to the business. Whereas on the personal side, I did have to estimate quite a lot of stuff based on rough ballpark numbers because I don't keep a detailed spreadsheet like I probably should in terms of budgeting on the personal side, but we have exact numbers for the business. So by far the biggest expense is salaries. Now this year we have spent $501,987 so far on salaries. That number is gonna be a lot bigger next year because for most of this year, our team hasn't been that big. Our team was four people in January and then it went to six people in January and then we had seven, eight around about June time, but now we have 17 full-time members of staff. So yeah, this salary bill is gonna be absolutely huge. Now of this 500K, about $315,795 is the team themselves. And that's a monthly average of $26,316. Now again, this does not take into account the fact that we now have 17 people because these are for this calendar year, but that gives you an idea and it'll be interesting to see what this number looks like next year as well. We also spent $150,626 this year on contractors and freelancers. So these are people who are helping out with marketing, people who are helping out with social media, branding, um, we've outsourced an agency for some of our YouTube videos just to see what that's like. All of this stuff, all in all, including our accountants actually, are $150,626. And we spent around $35,566 on consultants. So this is kind of mostly around like YouTube analytics-y type consulting, which has actually been quite a bit expense, a big expense. So overall, $501,987 on salaries and wages this year. The next big category is expenses that we have for our live online course, the Part-Time YouTuber Academy. Part-Time YouTuber Academy is by far the biggest source of revenue for the business. It drives more than 50% of business revenue, but it also costs $197,678 this year to run with a monthly average of 
or $14,385. In fairness, a bunch of these costs are around paying our affiliate providers because we've, have, we've got affiliate relationships with various people and we have to pay them out quite a bit of money because they help get people to our course. So it's not like we're losing money, but we are paying a significant amount for affiliates. We also pay for this service called My Snapshot, which is run by an internet friend of us called Charlotte Crowther. And that is like an outsourced data visualization analytics team that helps with the data side of our course. And we have a bunch of costs where we're paying people to be house masters for the course. So we, at one point we paid big YouTubers to come in and help coach some of our students. Um, and we also pay for our student supporters and for our alumni mentors and stuff to feed back to students. And there's this whole like operation that goes behind it, which I'll go into more detail in a later video. Alrighty, next we have workspace. So we have this studio, which we moved into in October, which is pretty expensive. It was $14,600 per month for September through to December. And that is $58,400 for the year. And back when me and Angus were living in Cambridge, we also had a subscription to WeWork, which in total was $7,577 for the year. And so, so far this year, we have spent what is it? $65,877 on workspace, which I think has actually been overall very, very, very worth it. And we have the studio, which is stupid expensive in fairness uh, for the next like 12 months. So it'll be interesting to see how the space evolves over time. Next, we have food. Now, weirdly in the business, we actually spend about $1,000 a month on food. And the main reason for that is that basically anytime the team get together or anytime we have a podcast guest or anytime we're co-working with anyone or having a business meeting or, or, or anything of the sort, we tend to order delivery for everyone and we pay for it through the business. So we spent $12,000 this year on food, which again, I think has been worth it. Next, we have equipment and supplies. Now we spend a bunch of money on stuff. So for example, on tech, this year we have spent $69,980. This bill was higher than it should have been because at one point my Tesla got broken into and I lost, someone stole about $25,000 worth of gear, which I then had to replace. So, you know, that was a bit of a, a bit of a hit to our bottom line because we had to replace all that stuff. Uh, but also in terms of cameras, you know, Apple products, we buy MacBooks for everyone in the business. So that adds up it just sort of adds up. And so monthly on average, we're spending $5,832 on various tech and camera related stuff. And weirdly, we also have this general category of expenses, which has come out to be $50,272 for the year. And that is like general stuff for the office that doesn't neatly fall into any other category. Like, I don't know, gifts for team members, like FedExing parcels, if that's what we need to, stationary, uh, buying various things for the office, that kind of stuff. I do need to take a closer look at this because I'm very curious as to how the hell we're spending $4,189 per month on like this general expenses thing. I think there is definitely stuff that we could, we need to cut down on or at least figure out where that money is going. That's a bit weird. Next, we have the broad category of subscriptions and software. And on average, each month we spend $4,146 on software. Oh my God. I didn't know how that number was that big. Right. What, what's this coming down to? So there's this app called Workable, which is what we use for like our hiring. We paid $6,539 for that in total, uh, which was just in September when we were doing a big round of hiring. That was quite expensive, but was probably worth it. This year, we've also paid $6,411 to ConvertKit, which is the email marketing email software app that we use to send emails to people. That's quite a lot. We've also paid $4,727 for the year to Zoom. We have a Zoom like premium account for a bunch of people to be able to run events for thousands, hundreds of people for our part-time YouTuber Academy. That's quite expensive. We've paid $1,584 for the year for this app called Grain, which helps us record our Zoom calls and transcribes it. And that's kind of useful for the team. We've paid $2,072 for this service called Ahrefs, which is like a search engine optimization -y type thing that our marketing team uses to make stuff for the website. And we pay a few thousand more to Adobe Creative Cloud for me and our editors and our videographer to be able to use the Adobe Creative Cloud, which is kind of expenses. expensive. So overall, this year, we have spent $49,755 on various subscriptions and software. Oh my days. Right, three more categories to go. At number seven, we have coaching. Now, I, we spent a lot of money on coaching. We have spent $74,644 this year on coaching. That is business coaching of various kinds, coaching related to my book, coaching related to finance stuff, coaching related to operation stuff, coaching related to management and leadership. It's genuinely like really, really, really useful. I'm surprised that number isn't higher. $74,644 feels like a steal for the value we're getting from various coaches. Um, and that comes out to about $6,220 per month. And yeah, one of the things I wanna do in 2022 is actually increase that number. So basically I want anyone in the team who has significant responsibility, like any of our managers who are managing team members to have a coach who who's like talking them through the process and helping them out either on a weekly or on a bi-weekly basis. And I think the ROI on that is just astronomical. And so I'm very, very bullish on the whole coaching thing. Next, we've got business travel. And this year we spent $18,540 on various traveling stuff. So that was mostly a trip to Monaco that we did to film a, a podcast with a chap called Oliver Cookson, who wrote a book called Bootstrap Your Life. He's the founder of a, a company called My Protein, and he turned it from 500 pounds to 350 million pounds. So we had him on the, on the deep dive podcast. Link
link below if you want to check it out. That was a pretty expensive trip because we took me, we took a videographer and we took Amber and we took Angus. So there was a lot of people on this trip. And then it just adds up when we travel to various filming locations. I don't know where this money goes. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how it just gets added up. But like, you know, if we need to transport camera equipment or like go somewhere, we'll get Ubers. We get, we get taxi services for our guests to come to the studio for the podcast. It all just seems to add up. And so we spend $1,545 per month on business related travel. And then finally, another big category of expenses is taxes and fees. And so this calendar year, that's come to $195,941. Now this does not include corporation tax, which is gonna be absolutely huge when we find out what that bill is, but it does include PayPal fees, which are 16,434 pounds. It includes employers, employers liability tax, employers tax, and like various VAT value added tax type things. I honestly, I don't know the full details of this. We're gonna have a meeting with our accountants at some point before the end of the financial year, which is in April and also in June for our, for our company. So we haven't added up all these numbers full on because we don't work January through to December, but at some point I'll have a meeting with our accountant where they, where they explain how much of our money is going on tax and just how insane our corporation tax bill is gonna be for this year. But hey, it's fine, we're making money, we're having fun and we wanna pay our fair share of stuff. So yeah, $195,941 on fees and taxes, excluding corporation tax, which is it's gonna be big. And so if we add this all of this stuff up, our total business expenses, are $1.5 million, $1,513,314 with a monthly average of $126,110. So $1.5 million in business expenses for the year. I honestly don't know how the number got that high, but it's gonna be a lot higher next year as well. Now that like we're really kind of ramping up with the monthly expenses of the studio and all of the team members that we've got. I just kind of hope that our revenue matches this and we can continue to have fun and enjoy the journey and hopefully help people while making a business that is just about profitable. Um, if you're interested and you haven't seen the video on how much money we actually made in 2021, you should check that video out over there. Otherwise, thank you for watching. If you got this far, I hope you enjoyed the video for whatever it was worth. Not sure what value you got from it, but maybe you enjoyed it. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Do hit the subscribe button if you aren't already and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.